Fanny is said to be the primary antagonist of the upcoming FNAF game Security Breach, releasing on the 16th of this month. However, there is a lot of mystery surrounding the character. Who is she? Where did she come from? How can sentient code possess a human being? Well, what we do know is what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In a 10, suit. The suit that Fanny wears and the suit that she is known for is no doubt inspired by Afton and his love of the Bonnie animatronic. At this point, it's probably a little too much love, which I think would definitely have been the case if he didn't shove Jeremy inside of it in 1985. However, I think that it's pretty obvious that Springtrap or even more so Glitchtrap inspired Vanny's suit as soon as we saw that she had bunny ears in that one promo image from way back in the day. Or even when we first saw her head in FNAF VR's Curse of Dreadbear DLC. The suit Vanny wears is also very clearly a suit, made in a similar style to Glitchtrap's suit which suggests that either William made it during one of his mind melds where Vanessa goes to sleep and he takes over. The suit is patchy with different materials and fabric sewn in square patches over certain places like legs and arms. Arms, and it's unknown if these are because of cuts or rips in the original suit or if it's because she just didn't have enough fabric to cover those sections or maybe she thought it was creepier, I don't know. The stitching all over the body also suggests that it's definitely a suit to be worn by a person. But like my thing is if you're just trying to catch Gregory, why dress in a creepy suit? Like why not just make like a normal mask and be a normal killer? I mean like I guess if William made it and like if it is William then um, he's a furry, confirmed. And a 9 works for Fazbear. Vanny, or at least her Vanessa half, if she truly is Vanessa, does in fact work for Fazbear Entertainment, as disclosed in FNAF AR's emails. Vanny has been tampering with the animatronics, uploading glitch traps AI into them, but apparently she skipped Freddy. Like, maybe skipping him because he's like the main man that everyone checks on or something? I don't know. This is confirmed by the emails and special delivery, which talk about someone tampering with the animatronics. We don't know what virus she's uploading to these animatronics. It could very well be one that she made, but it could also just be like the main glitch trap virus that she herself is infected with. There are also theories saying that she only messed with Roxanne and Monty and left Chica and Freddy out of it, which is interesting, but according to the trailers recently, no Chica still attacks you, so they definitely got the Chica. So far, all we know is that she messed with some of the animatronics and now they can't be controlled or sometimes even found. Since these emails come from Special Delivery, a game with out of control animatronics, it's easy to dismiss these as about those ones, but it also makes even more sense to be about the animatronics we see in Security Breach. So so it could just be both. And it ain't not an animatronic. Vanny does not seem to be an animatronic. Despite Glitchtrap possessing her, there is nothing animatronic-like about her movements. She moves like a normal person, and while there may be some hard to explain things, those things are explained away by saying it's because of William. Which you kinda need to accept at this point, because like, that shouldn't make sense already. Like, if you can suspend your disbelief enough to explain how sentient code was able to possess a human being, you're fine. You can easily have everything else explained by that singular, simple moment in the series. Just William possessed her, that's why. Her voice is glitching because William possessed her, that's why. Her eyes glow red because William possessed her. Yeah, you basically have everything else explained. <laughs> Plus, you can kind of throw everything else out the window because if we're going to accept that, then there's nothing that we can really complain about. However, I'm not accepting it, so I'm going to keep complaining because that's my job and I love what I do. And yes, I mean, complaining about Five Nights at Freddy's not making YouTube videos, but all, the, the same thing applies to that. And it's seven, reluctant. Given that Vanny was originally being referred to as the reluctant follower, on Voices.com prior to her name being revealed in one poster, it's still an interesting title nonetheless, since the act of following typically refers to a choice, especially in this scenario. To be a follower is ultimately a choice, whether you make it intentionally or not, but being a reluctant follower of a serial killer shows me that you could back away, but won't. Perhaps because she doesn't want to fight off the influence entirely, who knows, maybe she has like a sicko side that William was able to unlock and now she doesn't need him to go on a killing spree, I don't know. Like me in these videos, eventually they will break me and I'll go insane and then all of these videos will be used against me in court because maybe I'm joking about this a little too much at this point for it to really be considered a joke. And it's six, the first. No, I don't mean the first as in like, I was the first. I have seen everything kind of way. No, 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 I mean that Vanny and presumably Vanessa are making giant leaps forward, not only for women in the Fazbear universe, but for security guards in the Fazbear universe. <laughs> Being the first non-animatronic character to attack the player, the first female to be a security guard, and the first security guard to have their face shown. These are some major steps in the FNAF world as we typically are playing as the security guard. So seeing their face would be kind of 
pointless. So we know that even if Vanny isn't Vanessa, although it seems like it, it is certainly the case, if they are in fact two different people, at least Vanny is a non-animatronic attacking the player and the first female villain. Not including robots because they're actual robots and not their characters. One small step for Vanny, one giant leap for Killer Bunny kind. Or is it like FNAF kind? I feel like this is kind of impacting the whole universe as a whole, not just like other killer rabbits. Do you think that Vanny is a bunny or a rabbit? Let me know down below. Halfway through in number five, Ness. Ness seems to be a nickname for Vanessa, who seems to be the name of the security guard we've been seeing in the merch and in the trailers. However, this Ness nickname seems to be the only connection in the game so far to connect these two characters. Being present in FNAF AR emails, the character known as Ness seems to be exhibiting behavior that would make sense for a character possessed by the sentient code form of a dead serial killer. Googling, according to the creepy HR rep Lewis, the migration pattern of bees and then how to induce compliance in humans human subjects. And at one point she just searched for help, which is certainly indicating that she knows what's going on to her and that she's blacking out and probably knows why. Could this Ness be Vanessa that becomes or poses as a security guard in Security Breach while also being the psychotic killer Vanny? Since it's something that the FNAF series would do, I don't know if that's really what's going on here. I don't know anymore. I have trust issues because of this series. And it for resisting. Vanessa, however, is fighting back against William's control and resisting his influence. Not only does she try and search for help as indicated by the FNAF AR email, but she is also resisting his control to begin with, since he ends up searching for ways to induce human compliance. We learned that thanks to the FNAF AR emails again. So there could be a happy ending to this game yet. William is losing control over Vanny, hence why he needs the animatronics and help. Maybe as Vanny, he made a Vanny robot to take control since he was losing grip over Vanessa. It's FNAF, anything can happen at this point. Who knows the way that Scott wants this game to end. Will Vanessa be successful in breaking free of William's grasp, or will she die? She's probably gonna die uh, just after redeeming herself too because Scott loves to make us cry. Getting close to the end in number three, the plan. Vanny has a plan. Like, we may not know exactly what it is yet, but she has a plan and she seems to be acting on it. She needs Gregory for something since she has selected one, but she also needs other things. The animatronics on her side. William wants us to bring him what he wants, or that could even be Montgomery Gator, but what is that thing? Is it us? Is it Gregory? Is it an animatronic body? Could the Stitch Wraith just be an animatronic building itself up so that William can use it as a body in this universe? Like, is that what she needs, like, to find out? Or, like, what? Or will any animatronic endoskeleton do? The entirety of her plan basically is obscured to us, and especially with the recent trailers, they don't really expand on this plan. They just show us that it's supposed to be kind of scary. We only know that it seems to be that she's planning to resurrect William Afton, and if that is her true plan, she could be trying to maybe eliminate him once and for all? Kind of like doing like a double agent thing in her own head, which would kind of be insane. So I'm kind of expecting that now, Scott, so you better not disappoint. But ultimately, in number two, human masks. This one is particularly interesting in an email I saw from FNAF AR Special Delivery again. This was sent by our IT stalker Lewis and refers to Vanessa buying three realistic human masks. Lewis asks if they're for a screenplay, and unless that's a hint to what's going on with the FNAF movie, that's definitely wrong, my guy. The three masks could be put over animatronic robots was my first thought, kind of like the Michael skin suit situation, where it would be an endoskeleton but with a realistic facial features and a thirst for blood. I don't really know what else three realistic male masks could be for? Like honestly, do you have another explanation? Like leaving them around to scare people? Covering them in blood? Maybe to trick William into thinking that she has Gregory? Or maybe the different sections of these masks can help reform Afton's face? So he's, she's gonna put that on a robot? I don't know. I don't know why these masks were mentioned and nobody seems to really be talking about it. So again, I had to bring it to your attention. Please help me figure this one out in the comments if you can. Maybe we can make like a community post about it or something and have like a discussion. Finally, in the number one, out of control. But despite all she's doing to try and resist William's influence, she is still being controlled, at least partially, by William, making her dangerous and out of control. I mean, she's trying to kill a kid for God's sake who might even be a close relative of hers considering some of the trailer lines. So her being out of control certainly looks to be the main premise of the game. She may be reluctant, but she's hurting people from what it seems, including anyone who was in that security office when she shut all the cameras off, because I'm pretty sure she was the one who did that. The only question now is who will be able to save her, or is she going to be lost to us forever? How easy is it going to be to wipe out a load of sentient code possessing someone's brain when they shouldn't be able to possess a brain as code? 
from the get-go because well like a brain's not a computer at some point I'm going to have to believe anything this game throws at me though because simple logic has been out the door since the doors opened up when you ran out of power that's right I managed to mention it again that's all the time we have for today friends thank you all so much for watching I have been in shower main Connor Monroe and I'll see you in another video